on the roadshow the latest hot rally car, the MPV Test Match, Van Heaven and three Mega Minis. Car enthusiasts, I have here the key to something that'll get the blood coursing through your veins. It belongs to the latest punchiest sporting coupe from Ford's motorsport and design whiz kids in Essex. Big flared arches over massive wheels. Stripped out interior rally style. I'm itching to drive it. But first, let's save the moment and meet its great, great grandfather. It was 1962 that Ford teamed up with Colin Chapman to produce this masterpiece, a fusion of famous sports car and familiar saloon. Because old Henry was always touchy about other people's names getting on his products, it was called the Ford Console Cortina, developed by Lotus. Someone at the factory made its internal reference code HM, standing for Hairy Motor. Everybody knew it at the time simply as the Lotus Cortina. Under the bonnet was a 1558cc twin cam engine with 115 brake horsepower. Commonplace now, but then truly hot stuff, especially with a Lotus pedigree. Underneath, suspension redesigned by Chapman and his staff, who were the world's experts in performance handling. You really feel part of the car, you feel every movement in the chassis, the suspension and the steering. And like all Lotuses, there's just that magical ingredient about them. The great Jim Clark raced Lotus Cortinas. In fact, he drove the prototype, and he found it went best slightly sideways and on three wheels. Much as I'd love to, I'm not going to chase this family heirloom today because it belongs to our friend Graham Kent, who wants some tread left on his tyres. Take it as red, top speed was 116 miles an hour, 48 of them in first gear. 60 came up in 7.5 seconds. 115 horsepower may not sound a great deal today, but back then, that was real rip-snorting performance. Getting into one of these would be like, I suppose, getting into a, an M3 BMW today. That's the closest equivalent I can think of, and that's got 320 horsepower. I think the car was way ahead of its time. At 1,200 pounds, it was a lot more than the family Cortina and off it went to become a classic worth up to 25 grand today. You could probably argue that the Lotus Cortina, along with the Mini Cooper, was the very first hot hatch, had they not had a boot. Or maybe the first GTI, had they not had carburettors. But certainly, the very first family saloon that was a real performance car of its decade. So where has evolution led us now? A million miles put on very tight straps and fire up the unique Puma Cosworth. Underneath, the motorsport team have put all the important bits from the Escort World Rally car. It's a tremendously exciting car to drive and technically brilliant. This rally car's got the most amazing four-wheel drive system, which dissipates the drive to whichever wheels need it most. And my God, they all need it at the moment. Even when you do a handbrake turn, it disconnects the clutch to relieve the drive of the wheel. It's as easy as that. The power steering rack is light by road and racing car standards because rally drivers do a lot more lock-to-lock -lock steering. Well, climbing, I take my hat off to them. They've told me I can turn the anti-lag switch off, and I'm told that makes it very ferocious. So here it goes. What it does is to pump fuel and air into the engine at a massive rate, so that you've got instant throttle response. And I mean instant. It means that whilst you can hit 60 in under four seconds, you've got even better punch in the mid-range. It's real technical wizardry. You have to change gear every second and a half or less. Amazing machine. 
machinery. Unlike the Lotus Cortina, this isn't a car they'll be selling, except in bits to the motorsport world for competition. When the Lotus Cortina moves over, you get a great picture of automotive progress in Britain. The Puma team in Essex have every right to be proud.